Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is Pernell Bobby, your astrotherapist, using astrology and leveraging that in order for you to go ahead and find ways to alleviate suffering, which is ironic because today we are talking about Pluto in the 12th house, 12th house, Pluto, Scorpio, all these type of things have to do with suffering, okay, as well as coming to a place of unconditional love and understanding our unconscious and our subconscious patterns that cause some of this pain some of these traumas or traumatic events that happens in pluto in scorpio so if you have a scorpio rising or scorpio ascendant and you also have pluto in scorpio for the 12th house this is specifically for you understand that this isn't necessarily fully just pluto in the 12th house by itself in scorpio and it's not just a scorpio rising by itself um, or scorpio ascendant it is the combination of the two when they're conjunct uh especially if the degrees are close or if they're far, I'll try to explain a little bit of that. Before I go any further, if you enjoyed any of that, if you are here and you have one of those Scorpio rising places, go ahead and drop the Scorpio symbol down below. I say this from a place of community, uh, especially because many Scorpio risings and Pluto and Scorpio 12th house, you face a tremendous amount of isolation, which is a part of the 12th house. You face a tremendous amount of isolation whether you're either currently or past life or this life was in prison, potentially even in monasteries, meditating like a monk uh, or or uh, very sick in the hospital because of certain mental illnesses. OK, this is a house where schizophrenia, uh, bipolar disease, any kind of mental illness, psychosomatic illnesses, any mental illness uh, is really what you want to watch for. And it's a result, a direct result of fear especially the fear of losing control if you're a scorpio rising i have a lot of scorpio rising videos i am a scorpio rising myself i do have pluto in the 12th house myself and i am speaking from a place of like at this point selfless service but also to help keep myself somehow some way stabilized on this planet earth where you know from <laughs> for the last four days i've been straight depressed it's just what it is and the last two days including this morning including five minutes ago it's like the tears are just they won't stop and you know for me this is actually a moment of therapy for myself to go ahead and be able to speak about this because this is a very tough placement um it's oftentimes very misunderstood i don't think even myself as an astrologer i don't think anybody can really understand what pluto in the 12th for Scorpio ascendant and rising, especially conjunct with Pluto being in Scorpio. So I don't think any of us, I'm talking about this from personal experience. I don't think any of us can really ever truly understand this because the 12th house has no walls. All right. The 12th house is related to Pisces and Pisces is absolutely ethereal. So it's a part of everything. Now, when you add Scorpio there, who is an investigator and wants to investigate everything, all forms of pain, all forms of suffering, all forms of regeneration. Okay through their own personal magic abilities all right um, all forms of unconditional love scorpio wants to dive the deepest in this placement and, and and the thing everything i said is and what's hard is especially depending on what house your no not your house what degree your rising sign is as well as your pluto and scorpio is this will kind of give you a little bit more focal areas and what you can also do to gain more clarity on this placement is look at where your Mars sits as Mars is the more traditional ruler of Scorpio. So that's something very important to play in where like for me, I have a Mars in the eighth house. So what are we talking about? Eighth house, Mars is an unconscious planet as well as Pluto speaks about our unconscious and our subconscious programming, the behaviors that we don't fully understand that we're doing when we're doing them. Um, one of those things in its toxic form will be emotional manipulation. Uh, we have to be very careful of when we emotionally manipulate people. This causes a great amount of suffering, not only for the person that you are manipulating, but also for yourself. And it's basically a form of escapism, which the 12th house covers in Pluto. You have to be very mindful of escapism uh, or even drugs. Now, this is the house of the shaman. Okay. So you have the ability to go ahead and connect with good spirits and bad spirits. So what am I saying? 
spirits. We have to break down the word spirits and realize that at least in America, spirits are also called alcohol. Alcohol is a form of a spirit, depending on the type of alcohol. If I drink vodka, I'm taking in the Russian spirit. When I drink tequila, I'm taking in the Mexican spirit. Okay. Um, moonshine, I'm taking in the spirit of slavery. All right. So like we need to understand these elements because you are the shaman with a Scorpio rising, Scorpio ascendant. So I think that there's always going to be a point of escapism through spirits. Let's say alcohol in this instance for clarity and just understand what you're doing and kind of put yourself in a mindset of even what you could potentially expect. You know, like when I drink tequila, I'm happy and, you know, go lucky. And like if I drink wine, I'm more sensual and like that. Libra 12th house kind of comes out and I start craving the connection, which oftentimes requires some sort of emotional sacrifice. If you're a Scorpio rising, you likely have a Libra in the 12th house and it requires some sort of emotional sacrifice in order for you to actually find that deep soulmate who you lost in a past life because 12th house deals with the past life, especially in Pluto. So it's like in a past life, you would have lost somebody very dear to you who you're likely to find in this life, but the focus can't be on them. It has to be entirely on you because the Scorpio rising needs to become self-aware of all of its cravings and desires unconsciously to merge with someone else and realize what does it cost to actually merge with somebody at such a deep soulmate level. And that's not just romantic soulmates, but because we're talking Libra 12 house as well as a part of this, which you'll likely have as a Scorpio ascendant, um, at least especially like in the Placidus system. Uh, it, it's just something to kind of really consider that. And I'm speaking from personal experience. So I have a. Uh, my Pluto and Scorpio is in the 12th house, but it's at the 19th degree, which is also a degree of Libra, which speaks about really one Libra 12 house you're going to attract a lot of liars okay you're going to attract a lot of people that are not honest a lot of people that are not just and that causes a lot of pain for Scorpio because the Scorpio rising Scorpio ascendant like we obviously deal with a tremendous amount of trust issues just by having a Scorpio rising alone so um and that does link to Libra in the 12th house which is kind of where we attract those let's say liars um or people without pure intentions and basically are being socially manipulative in order to gain your love for some sort of relief of suffering in their own particular life. So this counts in your platonic friendships. Uh, this is not just romantic liars. This is platonic friendships where, um, you know, I was triggered last night tremendously from the, the crying aspect that just won't stop. And really what it came from was um, more so the intimacy on a platonic level and what it was really revealing to me because as a Scorpio rising in a Pluto 12 house in Scorpio, we have to realize that we have ways of using divine intelligence to place instruments or distractions. Relationships is a big distraction for us, uh, but instruments, distractions, um, obstacles in our way in order for us to address the deep emotional longings that we have for merging and for connection and for uh, our soul to tie to something or someone somewhere. So what causes a lot of this, what's important to note about a Scorpio rising as well as the Pluto 12th house is in Scorpio is uh, when you were born, you went through some deeply traumatic shit. Uh, it often was what caused such a nonsensical form of isolation from exactly everything that we love. Like everything we desire, we basically find ways to not give it to us. Whatever we find fun and exciting or even on the opposite end, whatever we find deep and emotionally pleasing, uh, this placement with the Scorpio rising in the Pluto 12th house has the ability to deny everything we desire. And it's unconscious. It's oftentimes relating to personal power. Somewhere in youth, 
someone told you you weren't as strong as you were. And I'm, mind you, I'm also a Scorpio rising with a Pluto 12th house. Somewhere in youth, somebody has um, basically created a fog because 12th house is related to Pisces and it has that fog illusion type Neptunian energy as the traditional ruler for Neptune. But you have to take as the modern ruler for Neptune, but you have to take in the traditional rulership of Jupiter, which is the place of spirituality and optimism as well. And basically unconditional love and service uh, of the highest spiritual blessings you can pass along to someone. So what I look to at least try to provide comfort with, with this, because this is really not the easiest placement. I honestly believe that it's the most difficult placement in astrology. And that's obviously arguable, arguable right? You can comment in the chat what you think is difficult that you would like for me probably to address if you're not in this bracket. But definitely hit the like and thumbs up while I keep going on this and drop a Scorpio uh, Zodiac emoji if you're resonating what I've said so far. Don't forget that you are the shaman and all the suffering and the traumas and the forms of isolations you're going through. It's so that you can basically serve selflessly and look at your degree, which will help you understand. So for me, in significant relationships, selflessly in significant relationships, and I also have my Scorpio rising at the 23rd degree, which brings in shocking, lightning fast, abrupt revolutions in my own personal and individual character. So for me, this looks like, you know, I could you're either when you're a Scorpio rising, you're either feeling empowered or disempowered. It's usually a one or two. So you kind of have to like pick and choose where you want to be on that side of the line. You're going to play weak and meager or you're going to play intensely dominant like you are. Um, so you're either empowered or disempowered. So what's important about this when I have this like as an example at the 11th degree. Um, these shocking revolutions will come in order for me to rebel against the parts of my own personal character with my rising sign being Scorpio. My own personal character, I'm looking to rebel against the control that has been subconsciously placed on me, that has been unconsciously um, ad adopted and absorbed by me because 12th house is a house of absorption. Uh, Pisces has that chameleon type factor to it. So when you add that to the characteristics of the 12th house, you know, what can stop our transformations on a subconscious level, on a permanent deep level? Uh, because Pluto represents permanent transformations and regeneration. Um, permanent, key word. When it when it when it implodes, it's it's permanent. You know. So if you can find a way to learn the lessons that I hope to clarify today, what you can do is you can evolve. Uh, you can you can take what was once suppressed and all that repressed power, and you can actually begin to use it uh, to heal. Uh, I, I, like I said, you are the shaman and, and, and you're healing basically the collective, literally mankind, humanity, okay, with all of your esoteric prowess and ability to dive so deep in such intense and even extreme, because Scorpio always represents ext extremes, extreme intensity. You shall be able to dive so deep in the extremes of the abyss of absolutely everything and nothing at the same time. You're not a human. Uh, you probably already understand this yourself, and it makes it very difficult to want to stay on the earth. And this is where a lot of mental illnesses comes up in the 12th house, where it's like, and I speak about this for myself, and this happened really, uh, really heavy last night where, you know, I had to call out for help. And I, I wasn't going to, I didn't even know who to send anything to. I didn't know who I, I could depend on in those moments. And this is a big tough thing for us when it comes to trust, where it's like, you know, it, it's very difficult for us to trust anybody because we don't really trust ourselves. And the irony of a, a Pluto's 12th house and the Scorpio rising is we don't really trust ourselves because our transformations are so rapid and we regenerate so rapidly, but we're not really familiar with how quickly Especially with like for me, like a 23rd degree or an 11th degree in your ascendant sign or even in Pluto, 23rd, 11th degree. And it could be a bunch of different things. For me, it's also the 19th. So it's like Libra and Aquarian type influences. Right. And it's really awkward for me because it's like, 
you know, I also have 11th house in Libra. So I have 11th house in Libra and 12th house in Libra. So it's like there's this there's this like there's this natural flow of the sun is moving. There's this natural flow of um let's see if we can do this somehow some way. There's this natural flow of friendship and and how valuable it is to me. And then there's this uh Fuck you, son. This is annoying. There's this natural flow of, um, it's not that code anymore. It was code earlier. Yeah, there's this natural flow of friendship and like really being good and being able to be very social. But then there's that 12th house where it's like all of that shit is very hard on the opposite end. It's like because we don't really have a big uh, meter with the Libra and 11th house to deal with and handle basically liars or um, anybody who's looking to socially manipulate us this placement you're going to oftentimes get people to gaslight the fuck out of you as well as there's a word that i'm looking for that's that's lost in my mind right now but um whatever it's imp it's unimportant for the moment you're going to get people to play you okay you're going to get people to play games with you and understand what's tough about this placement is like it's not really their fault, okay? Your ability to basically, as a Scorpio rising, dive so deep into yourself and become so self-aware, you have to understand that not everyone has such an inclination and a desire, consciously or unconsciously, to be so self-aware of themselves. So all the work you do and all the transformations that you keep going through, death, rebirth, death, rebirth, death, rebirth, phoenix phase, death, rebirth, death, rebirth, death, rebirth, phoenix phase, Understand that your character is always evolving and it's evolving at such an alarming rate that um, who once mattered in your life doesn't always maintain a position, doesn't always maintain a place in your atmosphere, literally in your energetic space. But they're not going to want to let go because you're such a healing and regenerative influence in their life. Uh, you always have the ability to just by people being around you, you to heal and you don't have to actually do or say anything it's just being in your environment being in your presence uh, Scorpio has that aura that Pisces has that aura all water signs and so like my Mars is also in cancer right so it's like that aura and so what happens is and what's tough is um, as a Scorpio rising you also have that seventh house in Taurus where it's like we will choose certain forms of security and stability and maintain unhealthy relationship dynamics at the cost of the resources, whether that's money or a home, um, any resource and that comes from a partner. Or we stay very fixed, all right? It's fixed, Scorpio fixed, seventh house in Taurus. So it's like, you stay very fixated on, this is the only person for me. Like, I don't wanna start over from the bottom. I don't want to start over my foundation in relationships. Foundation is being Taurus, that earthed element. You don't want to restart the foundation that it took to build slowly that relationship, but you're going to find yourself always forced to do exactly that. And that's really painful um, because, you know, it's like, fuck, I took all this time. And so we will stay in those unhealthy dynamics. This is one way that the 12th house of Pluto can manifest uh, suffering for you. All right by trying to basically spend so much time solving the problems of this unhealthy or toxic form of relationship that we unconsciously ignore our own self-development as a Scorpio and our own transformation, our own death rebirth process. If you look at my face right now, there's a scratch here and there was another scratch here. And if I get a third scratch, I do know it's definitely a fucking um, demonic entity that's attaching to me. And this is something that we face um, and these two scratches happen pretty much back to back and I scratched myself in my sleep and this is one of the calls where it's so hard some of these times to go back into isolation and face the dark the moment always comes back where we have to go back again into isolation and face the darks and transformative depth that our character is required to do and so I have not been expressing and even giving too much space for my emotions, which is a Scorpio rising with the 12th house in Pluto. We can do that. It's escapism in a 12th house. So 
when it's time to transform some of these transformations, especially the big ones, right? Because we go through this on a minute level every day, every minute, every couple hours, every month. But then there's those bigger ones, those really life altering transformations that you as a Scorpio rising will go through. And those are the ones that are where the Pluto and 12th house will, the escapism becomes that much more intense. Scorpio being about intensity, okay, and deep desires. Uh, that is so intense that I was actually in my sleep scratching myself because I was looking to remove the mask. You know, Scorpio Risings, you have the mask. I think in the, the human design, a lot of Scorpio Risings will have the heteric, the, the heretic and the investigator, the 5-1 heretic and investigator. And what that basically explains in simple terms outside of astrology, still using astrology in different ways, is um there's a mask that we wear there's a mask that we like to show people and part of it is to also isolate our characters so that no one is ever really seeing the true power of ourselves and like i said from the beginning this is often from a very traumatic experience in youth so uh, generally your mother like for me let's say that this first the first traumatic influence birth is trauma like if you think about it birth alone is so traumatic for the mother right she has a fucking human being coming out of her vagina that's terrible and then now you got the opposite end where like i had a c-section so it's like i was cut out of my mom's belly which is a whole another level of trauma right and my mom was maybe 20 to 21 years old so it's like now she's this young woman and my dad at the same time was in the military so it's like now he's going through watching people get blown up and sleeps you know eight hours in a seven hour a seven week a seven day period he may sleep eight hours always worried about bombs and and enemy fire in the middle of the night and making sure his platoon is kept safe that creates a tremendous amount of traumatic and mental disorders within a person especially when you don't express it and he's not expressive so what i'm saying is somehow somewhere your youth is traumatic um this could have been sexual sex is included in this house and you might not with this placement recognize how important uh, a very deep close sexual intimate bond is it's pretty much non-negotiable so if you ever are fighting with like your own personal sexuality and sex drive understand that like it's something that you have to allow yourself to cave in and give into because um pluto is repressed power and permanent transformation so when it blows i think it takes a 248 years for pluto to go all the way around the block when it finally comes through its whole Pluto return, uh, which doesn't have to take that long, but you know, transiting aspects can go over your planet while you're while you're alive. So, what happens is um, you're going to be forced to do something, and this is the biggest fear uh, to lose control for a Scorpio. But the reality is, with a Scorpio rising, Scorpio ascendant, and on top of that, Pluto in the twelfth house in Scorpio, you don't have any control. You literally are. Um, destined to live a certain type of existence and understand that this to my knowledge the fact when the rising sign is conjunct the it's its home planet in the 12th house in the first house um, this is your last life cycle this is what I've recognized and honestly this is giving me a lot of peace to understand that this is my last life cycle because you know I know you know if you're with this placement there's so many times in your life where you're like I don't want to be here um, you know so be careful of when we may play victim this is important um but also don't hide yourself away from your friends so much that um you harm yourself um like last night was a really prime example like i i i called out for help and literally three people texted me and one was my mom and i know she can feel my i know she felt my heart because i was i was so afraid of my heart being consumed in blackness and and and, and that was the truth um, last night, I was going through it. I was going through it after a conversation, and my heart was literally being consumed by blackness, and I didn't want it to happen. I, I, I was I was begging for my heart to not be consumed by darkness, and I can't lie, it was happening. But I kept my I kept my heart light, but everything around it was black, and it was terrifying. Um, it's honest to God, absolutely terrifying. And this kind of comes a little bit from 
like I said, at least for me, relationships, this is not even about romantic relationships, but also like the subconscious parts of patterns, relationship patterns that I've recognized in the types of partners that I've attracted and allowed to basically disrespect my own importance. And so what's critical with this is, and this placement is never to uh, evaluate your self-esteem because self-esteem is a very big issue, starting from the traumatic instances in you. Uh, for a prime example, my dad has a Chiron in Aries in the second house, which is like, okay, this is the unhealable wound about the self and his own value. So this is my parent, right? And so that's one example there on, on a front. So we often deal with um, issues of and complications with self-esteem or confidence. And so with this placement, it's important to not, it's important to not de allow your self-esteem and your self-worth to depend on um, the opinions or even the perception of others. Because with this placement, we'll oftentimes, in order to try to control, which we can't do, but we try anyways, the perception of who we are as a Scorpio rising, our own personal image, that oftentimes manifest as certain literally divine obstacles that we find ways to unconsciously place in our path in order for us to go through an emotional awakening literally an emotional awakening because we have to deal with tremendous amounts of pain and trauma in our life we have to because as a 12th house the house of suffering among other things spirituality there's a direct link from the mundane to the world of spirit so we have to go through this because you, again, are the shaman. You are the one transmuting and you are the medicine man, the medicine woman. You're transmuting spirits from different and alternative dimensions. You're not human. But we have to live a human existence. And with this, this is your last life cycle. This is like the greatest sacrifice that you have to give because power and control is like this is fucking Pluto, your owner, and desire and sexual power, sexuality. This is all your domain, and these are all the things we have to surrender, including material items and, and, and allowing those things to also transform. We have to surrender all of this, including every type of soul tie that has meant all the world to us. We have to surrender all of this, and you have to do it over and over and over again. And the truth is, it's not fucking fair. I fucking hate it myself, if I'm being honest. Um, there are other days when I'm feeling fucking completely well empowered. And then, you know, lightning fast, things can just be snatched from you. And it, and it really sucks. I really believe it sucks. But to put it on a positive note, to make sure that you don't take my emotional tone as this is it. This is the end. Understand again that this just happened for the last four days for me, going through this transformation, scratching my face in my sleep, trying to remove the mask that I've presented to the world, the perception that I've presented to the world. And I've been showing up more and more best I can authentically as myself. And as a part of that, I'm now also attracting so much, so many more challenges, people who want to challenge this authentic image of myself. And what's again important about this is to make sure that your self-esteem and your confidence is never dependent on the perception of others, especially when you show your true self, which makes us feel completely naked and takes away the mask um, that really protects us because you have an extreme emotional sensitivity. I know this. And other people can see this. But what they do see for sure, you'll see other people will see your any intentions that you have that are not pure and soul pure of light, people can check those manipulation tactics, even if you don't fully see them. And they'll manifest through partners a lot of time, lovers with that 12th house, which creates those liars so that they can basically break your illusion, break your reality. And this is the Piscean influence, especially with Neptune. Neptune is the great dissolver. So it dissolves all of the illusions that we face. And you face a tremendous amount of uh, 
mystical illusions, quite frankly, optical illusions. Like you, you can't trust what you hear. You can't trust what you see with the Scorpio rising in the 12th house in Pluto. Um, I would say you can more trust what you feel. And ultimately, you can never really trust other people. You can only trust that you will always survive. And you can only trust that you will always have the grass be greener on the other side when you find ways to surrender exactly what you fear the most. Every single time when you come across fear, ultimately, you have to embrace the dive. And this is going to be a forever process. But don't ever forget how beautiful it is when you do embrace that dive. Um, I've won very large every single time in my life when I've embraced it. And it always came with a tremendous amount of annoying pain that is just like, this fucking sucks. I can't lie. But at the same time, my life is always so beautiful. It's always so green. Don't ever forget that. This is your last life cycle and you're the realist. In my personal opinion, we are the fucking realist. And, you know, the real, what the real is that everything's not positive. Okay? That's a fact. So also remember that everything's not negative. That's also a fact. And realize that negative and positive absolutely don't exist. And you know this as the shaman being able to dive between worlds that these human constructs that annoy the fuck out of us uh, are exactly that human constructs. But the 12th house deals with everything. So be mindful of when you isolate yourself too much. And also be mindful that if you do not express your emotions through some form of art, especially physical activity, especially sex, okay, this is probably one of my greatest outlets. And it's like, you know, right now, like, I'm at sex like six plus months. I don't even know anymore. And it's like, okay, you know, life will put you through these switches and these changes where it's like, okay, P, you, you, 12 house is addiction. So you cannot rely. And honestly, that's more like... I don't know, eight, nine years ago, like I could definitely say, look at hindsight, eight, nine years ago, like there was a sex addiction that I was completely unaware of. Um, so when those certain aspects, those certain forms of escapism, 12th house, Pluto are taken, you're often going to have to embrace what is your divinity within yourself trying to reveal to you because when that was taken eventually it was lacrosse and physical activity is a great form you can hit people literally as hard as you can it's like oh this is awesome but then again that was taken and it's like each one of these times like there are great bouts of depression that you can pretty much expect but understand that depression is just spirit's way of trying to reveal um a part of yourself aka your ascendant your scorpio rising that you otherwise would not have been aware of or unconscious about so recognize that this is a part of the blessing because you don't ever have to really worry about being fake um life will assure that you're going to experience exactly what you're going to experience and even if that's absolutely painful um definitely hit the like and subscribe button hit my email list i'm going to be putting out a lot of content for you guys that you're going to enjoy um that stuff is all formulating uh beyond that though uh, the last thing I would like to say is, mind you, that physical injuries will actually manifest in your body if you do not express yourself emotionally. If you do not f- express yourself emotionally, you will literally find yourself going through psychotic breaks. I mean that, okay? Um, wanting to leave this world, aka some form of death. But when that moment happens, because it's going to happen a lot in your life, you're going to feel very suicidal in certain stages of your life. Recognize that you're not looking to necessarily physically die, but you're looking to metaphorically go through your death in order for the Scorpio to be reborn again so that you can take that Phoenix viewpoint as that firebird, that flaming, that that flame is your personal power. This is what Pluto was basically trying to get us back to when you feel like I want to kill myself or when you feel like I want somebody to kill me. Like I told a friend last night, I remember a time in my life when I, I walked up to some gangsters on purpose and I, 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 was, I was crying. I was going through a fucking shit time. And I told them up front, I picked a fight and I said, you better shoot me in my head. Otherwise, you're not going to make it. And so I threatened them to such an extent that I didn't leave them much choice. And, and you know, did I really physically want to die? No. But I wasn't finding any other healthy outlets, quite frankly, at that stage in my life. And so I was looking for the metaphysical death. I was looking for the mask, again, as I have these scratches on my face, to be taken off in order for me to show up as my more expressive and creative self. 
as well as the self that has their personal power, which again, Pluto will force you to go through it, depending on what transits go over. Cause man, I just went through a doozy and I'm still honest to God in the middle of it. Like I said, I was crying on the way over to this ride. And it's like, you know, there's a part of me that's like, I'm not okay. And I think that there are moments in our life where that's actually your bigger strength to recognize like that this shit is hard. Trying to downplay it, this particular placement, your Scorpio rising, your Scorpio ascendant, matching conjunct Pluto in the 12th. Understand like what the fuck that means. Like Pluto is with all the death and the, and the stabbings and the sharp objects and, and sexual traumas and like, and, and, and fucking everything underworld, okay? But remember the story of Hades and what he did in order to go get his love, Persephone and all that. You know, he's like willing to go to hell and back kind of thing. So recognize that this element exists because uh, you have that Libra in the 12th house. So recognize that. And also remember that <sighs> Gemini in the 8th house for you will say like, you know, you may not allow certain superficial conversations. If it's not deep, you're not going to have the talk at all. But recognize that some parts of us need to have some more superficial conversations because it takes us away from the intensity of the Scorpio. Because quite frankly, it's an intense placement. Scorpio is intense by itself. Pluto was hell of intense when you put, put it in Scorpio as well. It's like, oh my God, it's overly intense. You conjunct them, it's like, oh, what the hell? And then you put it in 12th house, it's like, okay, you lost all your power. You lost all your ability to control the narrative. You lost all your ability to hide. Um, no, you, not that's not true because you can hide very easily in the 12th house, but you can get lost. You literally can get so deep in the darkness that your light is no longer found. And this is kind of what I feel like symbolically I was so afraid of with my heart going black. Like I, I was petrified. Like, you know, I had a friend call last night and I could only pick up the phone and just mumble petrified tears. Literally, I couldn't speak and I just hung up like 15 seconds later. So, you know, but symbolically, I feel like my, me in the fear of my heart going black was kind of linked to what I had just said of like, you know, you have to always be very mindful of how deep you allow yourself to go. Right now, the South Node is in Scorpio. So it's like, what the fuck there, right? All this shit's coming out in order for me to live a more harmonious and simple life as I lean more towards Taurus, especially for Scorpio Risings, leaning more towards what? Taurus seventh house, which is your relationship. So um you know be mindful what you asking for and one of the things i've asked for is for me to be able to open up my heart and for me to be able to actually you know find a wife and start a family and and and, and kids and so as a part of this like my Taurus seven house okay those significant one-on relationships i got to get real grounded and it's like as a part of that uranus and Taurus right now it's like this is shaking the ground that i currently knew existed and everything that whatever i developed in and create it to feel safe, all right, in order for me to just be whatever version I am before I fucking transform the second I press pause and stop on this video. Um, all that stuff was happening for a very real reason. Uh, this video was very long and I, I really needed to go ahead and spill this. I've wanted to do this for like a year and some change, uh, but I actually am not very apologetic at all because there's so many people suffering with this particular placement and I'm speaking about that from personal experience. This shit sucks. But always remember that the grass is green on the other side. Always remember that um, if you look at your parents' natal chart, you can check in with what traumatic experiences might they have dealt with when it comes to self-worth, all right? Like, let's say my mom is a Libra at the 29th degree. Okay, boom, 29th degree, that's a little bit of drama in those relationships and a certain dependence is gonna be realized and required, all right? So it's like, again, her, so, Aries being the house of self, all right? Libra being house of others, it's like, okay, her sense of identity is dependent in some capacity on others, which lowers her self-esteem in some capacity on that aspect. Now, there's so many placements. And I use my dad's Chiron and Aries, all right, for second house. His self-worth is pretty much somehow, some way damaged, all right? As you add all that, that creates some of the traumatic experiences in the beginning of your life, or at least my life, that you can apply and you can start to Understand that you're an investigator as a Scorpio rising. So investigate, okay? F investigate with intention. Investigate with purpose. Investigate with the desire to learn more about yourself. And this is one of your ways out. And this is also one of your ways to divinity. This is one of your ways to 
literally 12th house divinity full surrender full release this is 12th house full surrender full release understand the the height of the 12th house when you allow yourself this emotional expression the height of the 12th house is regeneration and permanent transformation for the better the grass gets greener on the other side um and you you basically can serve at a level of uh experience from a level of experience as the shaman okay as the oracle don't ever forget that you are the shaman you are the oracle okay um the world needs you the world needs us the world needs me but as a part of that they need us from a place of strength and not from a place of need so um what i'm gonna say is get your shit together all right drop your tears do your do realize that some part of this sucks and get help uh, and i'm talking to myself as well um, and as hard as that is, I know that's very difficult, but get help, okay? Um, obviously, you can get a NATO reading with me and I'm one form of it for you because I have the personal experience to be able to really, really talk about this. So last time, go ahead, drop that thumbs up and you know, thank you for entertaining me. Thank you for allowing me to express some real deep shit today because whew, I needed to. Subscribe to my email list. I'll see you all soon. Love.